Hi, this is John with Fix-It Planet, and today we're going to take a look at another next book, model NXA8QC116, and it also has some brittle plastics that have been busted up a little bit, and the touchscreen needs replacement. On this side opposite of the volume keys here, power button and volume keys, there is also a cable, just like on the previous uh, video that we uploaded of the other model next book that we did these were back to back now the first one um the speaker was were, were actually the speaker was actually soldered to the motherboard in this case it actually has a connector so we'll be able to remove the back and get it out of our way while we do this repair so we'll take a closer look at that So there's the battery and the connector for the battery, and there's the wire and uh, connector for the speaker right here. So this repair is, is actually considerably different than the previous model that we did, that we just uploaded. And uh, so it's a completely different process. We're actually going to transfer uh, everything from the display, the battery, the motherboard, everything. We're going to transfer it all over to this uh, digitizer touchscreen with a frame assembly. There's three screws at the bottom and five at the top that will go into the corresponding holes here at the on the new frame. There's one at the top there two, three, four, five, and three more at the bottom. And those will correspond with the screws that we'll be taking out. So, very unusual design, and um, we're going to go for it. We're going to go for broke. We're not even going to test this one. We're just going to put it together. I don't even have the password for this unit. So we won't even be able to do full test on it, uh, but we'll give it to the customer and, and let them do that when they get here. And if there's any problems, uh, we'll deal with it then. But for the video, we're gonna go for it and hopefully it will all be something useful that somebody out there can use. Here's the touchscreen flex cable where it's connected on the motherboard and it actually goes through a slot in the motherboard itself We'll take a closer look at that here in a moment. Now the volume and power keys are located on a separate little board that has its own little flex cable and it goes into that connector there. Uh, these are connectors are going to have um, a sort of clamp and you'll raise the clamp to release it and push it down to tighten it. Now I'm just going to warm this up a little bit but you could probably get away with uh, doing it. You should, probably can do it without warming it up but just going to warm it up a little bit because it has a little bit of adhesive there that's holding that against that frame. And we're going to get a little tool in here and separate it from the frame. And we'll just take a closer look here. It slides in between these two little tabs and just lays flat against the frame. Okay, so we'll go ahead and take that out and we'll transfer that over with the rest of the stuff to the new frame. I don't know if you can make that out, but I think there's a part number there in case that gets messed up. Now there's one, two, three, four actually uh, metal brackets that have uh, silver screws. The other screws that we took out are black and a little bit different kind of screws, so can't really confuse them. But these metal brackets right here, they're actually holding the the display uh, into the the frame.
and once they've all been removed we'll be able to take this whole thing out of the, out of that frame and swap it over to the new one so those four are out we've got two more under the motherboard we'll see that here in a minute we're going to go ahead and take these other screws out these are the ones that look a little bit different they're black and the other ones are silver and these are holding the motherboard in Now we're just going to disconnect this cable here to give us a little bit more flexibility so we can this uh, copper looking stuff here we're going to leave that intact and that's going to kind of help hold that motherboard in place but we're going to raise and lower that motherboard so we just want to take the front this this uh, rear facing camera and just kind of get it out of the uh, cavity that it sits in and we'll slide that board we'll raise that board and up and slide this cable in and out I'm gonna do this again just uh, with a little bit closer view there's the slot that it goes through and uh, had a little trouble lining it back up but once we get it in there you'll see that uh, it just goes in and out through there just like that and we're gonna do that with the new one so we'll leave the motherboard just as it is. We'll take these other two metal brackets out. There's one there and another one here. And then we'll be able to take everything out of the frame. Touch screen, frame, and everything is going to go away. We'll get the new one. And we'll put all the other stuff, display, battery, motherboard, everything, right back in there. Just going to just gonna transfer it over to the new one so we're just gonna get a hold of it we're gonna flip it around and we're gonna remove the broken touch screen and frame assembly now this screen has got some marks on it uh, that are not gonna come off but we're gonna clean it up as best we can we'll take a good cleaning cloth and get as much of that dirt and other debris off of there as we can and we'll take uh, some high pressure air blow on it a little bit and then we'll get some black electrical tape and we'll come back and see what else we can get off of the screen we'll just do the best we can some of these markings are, are definitely not going to come off and at some point you just have to do the best you can but you want to avoid touching the display uh, with your fingers because then you just leave fingerprints and you have to go back in and try to get those up so I want to try to avoid touching it as much as possible so dirt and debris and little bits of broken glass or whatever get inside there and they just scratch up the screen so there's not much you can do about that we're going to remove the masking from the inside there. Don't forget to do that. Don't touch the inside part of that while you're transferring everything over. Just lays right back inside there. Now we'll go ahead and put these metal brackets in. No, it doesn't go there. So you want to pay attention to the orientation of the metal brackets when you're taking them out so that you can put them back in exactly the same way. And you'll want to kind of try to remember where they came from too because it's it's not it's not it's not really that obvious. So if you forget where they go you might want to refer to the video so we s just slide that flex cable through there and um, now we'll be able to reconnect that cable put our screws back
So you don't want to over tighten the screws, but you want to make sure that they're snug. Now we're going to reset that camera back down in its cavity, make sure it's seated properly. Make sure this is uh, lined up properly inside, and then we'll push that little And we reconnected that cable there, and um, now we're putting in the power button and volume keys. And each one of these little connectors, they have a um, they have a, a bracket that you have to raise and lower. So you raise it to release the cable, and you push it back down to lock it into place. Now we're going to put in uh, these metal brackets, these other four metal brackets. And they are holding this, uh, the LCD or the display firmly into the frame. So you don't want to leave them out. So this little plastic piece uh, appears to be some sort of uh, channel or a kind of port of some sort for the speaker. I guess that helps to kind of spread the sound out and enhance it a little bit. Now we'll go ahead and reconnect that speaker. These only go in one direction, so they cannot be upside down. Reconnect that battery and we'll close this back up. So the plastics on this one are also kind of brittle, so there's a lot of uh, cosmetic damage to this uh, back, but you can replace the whole back if you want to. And there's no power. So we have to charge it. So we're just going to plug it in. Get some signs of life here. So I wasn't able to do a, a complete test of this. We just had to go for broke, you know, swap it all out, and uh, and we did just a little keyboard test, and that's about it. And uh, gave it to the customer and let him figure it out. So if he had any problems with it, he would have said something, and we would have had to take it apart, send that part back, and get another one. Since we didn't have the password, I don't think that he did either. So all we're going to do is just a keyboard test here. And we'll just make sure that, you know, it responds when we go to power it off. These buttons are working, so everything's probably okay. Except that I couldn't, couldn't figure out how to turn it back off. And we'll pull away the masking on that, and it's good to go. So, hope you enjoyed it. If you did, like and subscribe. Thanks. See you next time. Bye-bye now.